Okay, so welcome back to Roots and Resilience. Now after the break. Um, so yeah, continuing a bit with uh, what we started with the spirals of destruction. I'm going to propose to you uh, another spiral and think about how we can turn it around. So let's imagine there's a person sitting in their house. They're hungry. They order some food. It's been produced in one of those big fields that we talked about earlier um, with the monocultures, the wheat, the tomatoes somewhere else, the cheese somewhere else. They've ordered a pizza and it's being brought into their house. They're going to eat it. They start to feel very heavy and sluggish from all this crazy food. And they start to digest it. And then they go to the toilet. And they flush the toilet. And their offering goes down somewhere into many long pipes. Nobody knows where. Lots of water. Lots of chemicals. Lots of things happen to it and it disappears and yeah this is going to cause many more problems down the line we're using all this water we've got all these chemicals all the nutrients get flushed somewhere and then we have the same problem that we have to add more and more chemicals to the depleted soil to be able to grow more food to be able to give it to all these people so they can shit it down the toilet so what would be a way to turn this around and to start spiraling into abundance? Humanure. Yeah, exactly, humanure. And do you want to explain, Belinda, what humanure is? Um, well, it's like, uh, instead of cow manure, or whatever it's using a poo with straw or sawdust and things letting and using compost toilet and leaving it for long enough for it to be uh, safe to use on as a manure as compost on food yep so it's composting the human waste so it's taking something which is a nitrogen rich material mixing it with a carbon rich material. So that could be straw, that could be sawdust, um, that could be wood shavings, um, and then putting it in a place where a lot of uh, different insects and soil life have access to it. Um, <laughs> okay, for anyone who doesn't see the comments, there's a very interesting philosophical question in the comments. I wonder if breatharians poop. Very good question. Maybe it's like a kind of ether, an energetical poop. Yeah, I have to look into that. Um, so yeah, with the composting, once you've mixed it with a, um, a carbon rich material, then yeah, you need to leave it in a place where you've got like a lot of soil life are going to work on it and are going to help break it down um to a state where you've got like a hot process and then you end up with something where usually after about a year it's broken down uh to a form where it could be used again um, on plants in a way that is uh, hygienic so you want to avoid having pathogenic bacteria um, that because they're feeding on things from our gut could be dangerous for us so usually when we're talking about using human new on a garden we don't want to use it on annual crops and we don't want to use it on um, food crops where you've got like a short chain. So it's possible you could use it um, in, your own, uh, in your own systems on fruit trees because you've got a long carbon cycle and the fruit is like quite uh, separated from where you'd be adding the human meal. Some people play it safe and only use it on uh, non-productive plants. Um, if you're doing any commercial system, you also need to be careful about like the regulations of that in our place because we know what we eat, we know what our health is um, and we eat the fruits, we do use it on our fruit trees. Um, so this is a really nice way of turning things around. So instead of yeah, having all this food coming in and then shitting it out and it disappearing, 
you can start to have like a really nice closed loop system which can then create more and more spirals of abundance so we can be going to the toilet we can be composting this really rich manure we can also be collecting the urine and using that as well because that's also a really amazing nitrogen and mineral rich fertilizer which we can dilute and put on our plants as well carefully you want to dilute that like one to ten usually and then yeah we can be growing food we can be eating that food so fruits for example or we can be growing companion crops which help our plants grow and then we can be creating more and more and more abundance and diversity in our system having a richer and richer system and yeah being a really useful part of that cycle rather than flushing all those things away so yeah in some situations that's a choice like you maybe have access to the normal sewage system and you can make a choice uh, if you don't want to use it it's a bit harder if you're in a flat in the city but if you've got a house or you've got access to an outdoor space um, where you can safely leave the human year to mature then it's possible anywhere where I live we're completely off grid so we don't have a choice so we've been using uh, compost toilets for a while who here's used a compost toilet anyone used one before Belinda Martha yeah <laughs> I think you've built one as well, Martha, in your place, right? Yes, the, a mixed one, not, not a dry one, but yes. <laughs> cool, yeah. So yeah, there are a lot of models out there. Um, and yeah, for us, it's like a practical necessity to have such a toilet because we don't have an alternative, but also because we have a lot of people visiting our place to like find out about permaculture and about off-grid life. Uh, we also want to have like a really nice toilet because I think it's one of the things that people are really worried about when they think about like either changing their life or volunteering or living in nature. They're like, where am I going to shift? You know, it's like a big, a big stress for people. You know, some people are like, oh, I can't go to the toilet because it's not comfortable. Um, so for us, that's like an important value, really, like making a toilet that people would really like that would seem like pleasant and comfortable for them and to just be like oh cool it's not just like a kind of theoretical worthy idea that we can do like a full cycle and you know we're not creating any waste and we're using they're like actually it's a pleasant thing to sit on you know because many of the fears are like oh it's gonna be like uh smelly it's gonna be uncomfortable it's gonna be like unpleasant to maintain it and I think with a good design, like none of those things really need to be that true. Um, I think everyone, yeah, who does have such a toilet, like maybe you need to get rid of some level of like squeamishness. But I think like, you know, most people in their life, if they've ever like cleaned a baby's bum after it's been to the toilet, I think after that point, you're like maybe get rid of that fear of like a natural human waste because yeah, it's just something that comes from our body and it's not so shocking and scary as some people think. Um, so yeah, I think when we connect to that reality, yeah, you have to do some maintenance of the toilets, but it's not that scary. So I'm gonna just show some pictures um, and then maybe we can talk at the end about like different models because I'm also interested in like toilets that you guys have used or made or read about because um, there are a lot of different models out there. Um, so let's share my screen. Okay. Can you see the photos? Can you guys see those okay on the screen? Yep. Yes. Cool. Um, so yeah, this was like the, the previous toilet we had. So it was like a really simple construction. We just made a teepee of sticks and then it was like woven together uh, with branches and then covered with like Hessian fabric and different reeds. Um, so this is just an example that you can make something like very, very simple. 
this was going to be a temporary toilet, but it actually lasted about seven years. Um, and this is like the inside part of it that we've just put now in the trees while we were building our new toilet. And this is nice because it's actually like a really simple way, like for me, most simple, if you want to knock together a toilet in like a really short amount of time. Um, so it's actually like a couple of tires, just like old tires with um, a toilet seat on the top. And it's just got like a wooden frame uh, under the toilet seat. So it sits on top of the tires. And then when you open the lid inside, there's like a bucket. So you can just take off the top tire and you can take out the bucket and you can use it. Um, so where we were, where we are, we don't have so many um, controls about like how you're using human here. Um, so this is like a simple way if you don't have any like public health issues around it. For example, in the UK, I know officially if you're um, like making human here, if you have a compost toilet, it needs to mature in like a closed uh, container. So what I've seen, which is a really simple way to do it is you can get um, these wheelie bins, you know, like the municipal wheelie bins for, for the rubbish. And um, I went to a place and he had a whole load of them because they changed like the standard of the wheelie bin or something of the machine that was picking them up. So they had like a lot of leftover wheelie bins and they're very nice because you can like create a toilet with a platform and then you can have the wheelie bin underneath and you can basically just fill that up you can like poop in the bin and then you can pull it out at the back and close the lid and then wheel it to the sides and let the human ear like mature there um, and then put another one underneath and then you can just have a field of those wheelie bins um, so that's kind of like next level if you need to have something enclosed this is just really simple like if you've got a place where you want to make a quick um, toilet so that's like a bucket system and then when we take out when the bucket's full we like have some sawdust there we mix the two together we cover it after you've been to the toilet and then you just take the bucket out and then we've got a place on the side where we empty it so we've got like we had originally California um, composting worms there um, but we've let them go free range and then there's a lot of native Kind of insect life there doing its thing and we have like a stack of tires um, and then we fill that up so usually we have about four or five tires and then they're full and then after a year it goes down to the height of like one tire um, and then that's ready compost um, so this is the beginning of building the new one here's the boss of the, the project Lucio with the power tools um, and yeah, this is kind of in the process. So yeah, here it is kind of almost finished. So what we built now is we built like just a small foundation on the bottom because we've got like quite shifting clay ground. Um, and then, yeah, we've made like a simple um, cubicle. We made a roof with an overhang to keep out the rain. We use some um, leftover pieces from the roof of our house. We've got like corrugated metal and the roof is tilting backwards. So we can collect water off the back of the roof. And then we've got like space around to put some different plants to climb up the toilet. So it creates like a nice uh, niche there. Um, and so basically what we have in this one, we've got a door and inside we've got uh two toilet seats not for two people to use it at the same time but because what we wanted to do to improve on the old system was to have a properly dry toilet so in the previous one what we had was the the bucket and the um tires um and because we like to wash ourselves with water when we go to the toilet rather than toilet paper um we had like drainage holes in the bottom of the the bucket so it didn't get really full and then we had a pipe going out the back, going to uh, a mulch pit. So we had like, we've got uh, mulberries growing there and it was growing to like a bottom of um, like a big stack of different carbon rich materials like cuttings and things. 
so like any of the liquids were going off there and then the solids we were taking in the bucket and um, putting them in the place to mature the fumanure. manure but what we found is because you've got those kind of holes at a certain point you get some smell so usually with compost toilets the problem and the reason why they smell is actually not from the poop it's from the urine so like when you've got urine when it comes out of your body it's actually sterile it's very clean and it shouldn't really smell if you're a healthy person um, but as it ages it turns to ammonia so you've got that like really horrible strong smell um, so most compost toilets that actually start to smell it's from the ammonia from the the urine so what we wanted to do was to separate the urine so for two reasons, as we talked about in the benefits of the compost toilet, firstly, the urine itself, when it's fresh, it's uh, got a lot of nitrogen, it's a very rich um, fertilizer that can be diluted and used on the garden, but it needs to be kept separated from the poop. Um, so firstly, if you separate it, you can use it as a, a separate fertilizer. And also, if you keep it out of the bucket, you're not going to have like that strong smell in the toilet and you'll be able to have a properly dry toilet and to have like a sealed bucket so that the space itself where you're using the toilet doesn't have like any um, any traces of the things inside it. So it's another good thing if you want to make a toilet inside, you want to have like a completely sealed bucket and area so then you can just take it out and empty it. Um, so in this case, what we decided to do to have to be able to like wash ourselves after using the toilet, um, but to keep the bucket dry was that we've got two places. So the one on the right is for going to the toilet and the one on the left is like a bidet so that you can wash yourself there. So you can see this is the view inside the toilet. So there's uh, a bucket at the back for the solids and then there is this um, urine uh, separator urine separator yeah at the at the front and it's not you can buy like urine separators there are lots of like models of ones that you can buy ready-made this is just a funnel sorry I was searching for the English <laughs> this is a funnel um, so it's just like a big size funnel that we bought from like a hardware shop that's for like putting oil in your truck or something um, so you just like see how both of those can fit nicely in the space uh, of the toilet and then this is the one this is the bidet one so we've got like a small um like a shallow bowl inside which has is tilted to the back and then there's another funnel there which will be like going out so then you can wash yourself there with water and that will go out and then on this one you can do your poop and cover it with sawdust and it will stay dry and your urine will go out the front. So let's see, here you can see like we just made a really simple box inside um, and we just used some recycled bits of cupboards that we found thrown away. So it's got like a wooden frame and then it's got this like bits of laminated cupboard to make the structure and we've lifted it off the floor so that it doesn't get wet. And so you can see, you just like pull that out from the side with the seat on it, and then you have access um, underneath to uh, get the bucket. So you can see here that it's just clipped onto the front separately, the urine separator. And then there are like different pipes coming off it, which are connected to like take the angle and then to go out the back of the toilet where there'll be another pipe coming off it. And then it will go into a container like a bucket that we can then top up with water and we can put onto the garden. So for us, it was important to have the urine separator uh, outside of the toilet itself. So you don't have to be like super vigilant that you haven't like overly filled the urine separator. Um, like usually we pee directly on our trees because we live in quite a like open place. We've got like enough land, but um, obviously sometimes both things come together or you've got guests who prefer to like be inside and sit on a toilet and not like go and find a tree so it's good to yeah to be to not be like constantly worrying about uh not being able to see like how much urine you've got because there are some systems where you can have like a bottle inside um so this one yeah you can see how it's going out and we also lined it with metal so that it's easier to clean inside 
week there you can see they're not very good pictures it was a bit cloudy today but you get the idea that the funnel is going down and then the pipes are going round the corner yeah maybe that's a better one you can see that it's like set at an angle at the top and then the pipes taking the corner and then you can take the bucket out like that you just slide it backwards from the funnel and then you can take it out easily to empty it just like that and the same with the, the bido bit, you can take off the, the lid of that and then you've got like the bowl and then we've stuck like another funnel to that and that's going to have a pipe that we haven't quite put on yet and that's going to go out the back as well. So that's going to be a wider pipe and it's going to go again back into this mulch pit because that's going to be, it's basically going to be black water because if you're washing yourself in it, it's going to have like a mix of different things. So that's going to go into that mulch pit so that it can properly compost there with all the carbon rich material that we have like cuttings, sharp cuttings from the garden that we're not using directly. So there you can see how we fixed it on the bottom. And then yeah, I think that's just see like the simple structure of the box. And then here you can see yeah how we've got like a pipe coming out the back which we will connect a longer pipe and then we'll have a bottle yeah i don't think you can see in the pictures but that's the reason why the toilet box is quite high so that we have like that height difference so like the height at which you're peeing is kind of like quite above ground level so then you've got like the ability to have a bucket below that height so you've got the pipe coming down and then you can put a bucket underneath because if it's too low, then it's a bit difficult to like actually have it draining away. Um, and there's a nice handle that Kirsty made as well. Oh. So yeah. So yeah, that's the kind of system that we built, which I think meets our needs in terms of a toilet like we'll have to test it out and see how it works but um yeah that was kind of our solution to having the the urine separate and being able to use that um keeping the toilet dry and yeah to be able to have a place to wash yourself inside um so yeah let me know if you have any questions about that or if there's anything else you want to comment Hi, Susan. So you joined us as well. Welcome. Hello, Sophie. Yeah, I was a bit late, late joining. But I couldn't find the link. Stupid. It was on the bottom of the email. But uh -huh, I don't worry. The poorly daughter at home as well. So I've sort of been a bit tied up. <laughs> but uh, it's very interesting. Uh, it'll be recorded so I can watch it again, won't it? Yeah, for sure. You can watch yeah. from the beginning. Yeah. Marta, you've got your hand up. Yes. Um, so uh, I was interested in the tire model. Um, you said that there was some wood structure. Was that underneath the seat? Is that just so it's stable or? Yeah, basically just because the toilet seat itself, because it's designed to be fixed onto like the ceramic toilet bowl uh -huh. yeah. in itself, they're not that sturdy. Um, and cause they're like an oval shape what we did is we made a kind of like square uh, square rectangular frame underneath with like longer bits. If you imagine it's like that, like that, and then two pieces so that like the front and the back piece were a bit longer. So they like sat on the tires so it didn't kind of like start to fall in and it was quite yeah. secure. And then also you mentioned about, I'm guessing you were talking about when you take the, to uh, the buckets out, you said five tires is that the place where you let it uh, sit for a year? Is that? Yeah. Okay. You just stuck yeah, them so on top like, of each other. Yeah, yeah. So we have a stack of tires um, and we do it that way. Like, I'm not entirely sure if that's like the very best way because there is problems with like tires and what they're leaching and things, but we have them on top of the ground. As far as I understood, it's like more problematic when you have tires like buried in the ground and like they're working with the, with the groundwater there can be some issues um, but we were using the kind of materials that we had freely available without having to like build big bins or something 
but as I said, like I've seen like people do really nice ones with uh, wheelie bins. Um, are they called the same thing in America? Like these kind of like big uh, bins for the for the trash, and like you have them outside your house, and they've got wheels underneath yeah. and like a lid. Yeah, mm -hmm. like a big kind of long rectangular bin. Um, and those are good because you can have again like a higher toilet, so you kind of go up some steps till you're like above the height of a wheelie bin. Because I mm -hmm. guess they're kind of like between waist and shoulder height on people. Um, so you can like climb up to the to that and you've got like a platform for the toilet and then you just put the wheelie bin underneath and then yeah you just pull it out and then you have it closed. So I know that system like meets kind of the regulations for having a compost toilet in the UK because it has to be in an enclosed space. Um, but you have to make some holes in the bottom there so that you can have like some drainage and so that you can have like different life getting in. But I think, yeah, it's like it shouldn't be open at the top or something like that. Thank you. And what kind of toilet did you make? You said you've already made one and you want to make a second. Yeah, bathroom. the one we've been using is is just like it's just like a bucket and um, we use hay or grass clippings. Um, and so everything's mixed and then we um, We've been using a pallet, so we use three, pa four pallet pallets to make a big, um, I guess, where we're gonna drop it in. Um, and I did two of the sh uh, first because I thought we would fill it up in a year, and it's been three years, and it just keeps going down. <laughs> so we're waiting for one to fill up before you start the other one. Um, so it, it lasts a really, really long time. Um, but yeah, it's, everything's together. Um, so I'm interested in like maybe separating the urine, urine so that we can have, um, yeah, like a fertilizer, but also like, I guess, liquid <laughs> water. <laughs> um, yeah, I love also the bidet idea, the, um, cause we've been using toilet paper since we started the compost toilet. We used to use the bidet. Um, so uh, we can, that's a, that's a cool idea. Thanks for sharing. Welcome, yeah. Has anyone experimented with tree bogs? Aha, I was hoping you'll bring that up, Rakesh. Because that's absolutely my favorite system. Anyone familiar with a tree bog? Um, it's where you, if you can imagine creating a place where you deposit your nutrients, shall we say, uh, inside like a like a straw bale kind of container, should we say. So, um, yeah, so you have like a straw bale, I don't know, two straw bales high kind of deposit area, which you then build a hut on top of to go into the toilet. And you then kind of put chicken, well, I can, yeah. The, the idea here is that you poop and pee straight into this area. Because it's kind of open both sides, it's not sealed. It's not completely sealed. You know, you've got some kind of structure. You've got some kind of something to hold it together. And, uh, but because the air passes through it, it kind of dries out the pee, absorbs the nutrients. Uh, but then all the way around, and so typically you'll, you'll build it on a downward slope. So your entrance is at the top. So maybe you might still need some stairs to go up. The, the, the actual deposit is down here, but then all the way around the sides and downhill, you grow stuff. So you grow things. So you basically what you're doing is you're turning the nutrients into biomass. And so that biomass could be obviously the, the one thing that's going to really love that is going to be uh, things like um, uh, willow in obviously here in the temperate climate, willow and nettles, comfrey will also love that too. And basically what you can then do is you can then be harvesting those. So you harvest the nettles, harvest the comfrey, turn it into a liquid feed then or just break it down into a compost and then you feed that to your your actual plants so basically what you're doing is you're uh you're turning your new your poop 
directly into nutrients much more quickly than having to leave it to mature to break down into actual hue manure. Now, the this system was actually designed by a soil biologist who is also a permaculturalist. And what he says is you only need to uh, put a handful of uh, um, wood, uh, wood ash, that's it. Not sawdust, but wood ash on top just once a day. So you don't need to have, um, yeah, you don't need to add sawdust, you don't need to add straw, you don't need to add any of that, just wood ash to, for some, some reason, yeah, it's something to do with the pH level. And, um, and yeah, and you can pretty much just use that for, you know, five, 10 years or something. And then when effectively the straw bale part of it starts to really decompose and become, yeah, no longer efficient, you just pick up your, you build another one, pick up your um, cabin, move it across, and then you just collapse the straw bale down, plant a tree. And so every four or five years, you kind of move it around and um, and you're basically just enriching the soil kind of in situ. And yeah, the, the only other thing that you need to consider is the, the fact that uh, mice and rats might try to live inside your straw bale. So you pretty much put chicken wire all the way around it. So it can still breathe. It can still, you know, uh, still gets air and things, but things like mice and rats don't get inside and live in it. That for me really, it's, it's minimum effort, maximum effect, uh, because as I say, you can turn your nutrients into biomass really quickly and then use that biomass directly in your system much quicker and in a much safer way, because as you know, with, um, with humania, if you don't get the actual um, compost to actually break down at a regular temperature. I think it's, is it 65 degrees, 55 degrees, something like that, for 20 days in a row or something like that. It, uh, it still potentially contains some pathogens, unhealthy pathogens. So if you don't break it down properly well enough, it can, yeah, you certainly wouldn't want to be using that um, on many of your food growing systems. So, yeah, so tree bogs, that's my my kind of favorite system. Yeah, I think it's a really nice idea. Um, I saw one in a hot place that didn't really work. It was quite stinky, but I don't know if that's just because the way they implemented it wasn't very well. Um, but I can imagine like in a cooler climate like the UK where you couldn't really guarantee like 20 days of like a high temperature, that it would be really nice work i think where we are because we had it in tires and because it's quite hot in bulgaria like within a year like for sure at some point we're gonna have like very high temperatures for like a solid period of time um so yeah i feel like it's it's had a good hot composting but yeah for sure it's i think that really depends on the climate like so what we've done really hot sorry that. So what, what we've done in really hot climates is uh, mm -hmm. to make like a solar dryer composting tool. Oh, with like the chimney to dry it out. So, yeah, so you make like a solar collector, you know, standard kind of solar box with a um, window, you know, sun hits it, warm air, and have basically that warm air pass through your where you're depositing your nutrients. And so it dries it out really well, really quickly. It may not turn it into compost, 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 but it dries it out and makes it safe really quickly. And you know, any liquids, you know, just dissipate immediately. Marta? Uh, yeah, Rakesh, do you think uh, it would be po like uh, possible to do a similar um, or that same method um, while still separating the urine or would that still kind of mean i mean i guess the nutrients 
Which one, the solar dryer or the human ear, the, the uh, tree bug? The tree bug and then, you know, with the haze, but then at the yeah. same time separating the urine for like fertilizing separately, I guess. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's no reason as to why you can't separate that. But in this case, uh, you don't need to. Mm -hmm. Obviously, if you, if you want to and you can set it up, then why not? Why not? The only downside to the uh, to the solar drying compost toilet is when the temperature when it does get cold, you know, during the winter, uh, it really doesn't work at all, and then it stinks, and that's that doesn't work. But in the so, if you're doing it, for example, for um, you know, for the summer, knowing that you've got guests and things who might be camping and blah, 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 and it's always hot, that, that works. But yeah, for your winter living, yeah, it doesn't work at all. Yeah. And I guess if you think about like the tropics and subtropics, you've got like the safety issue of having like kind of monsoons and having like a lot of groundwater coming through. And that's one of the reasons you need to be very careful to like lift up the, the human ear so it's not like on the ground and it's not gonna get like kind of pushed around by the like washed through with the with the groundwater and with those floods so you don't end up like yeah polluting all the groundwater with it there and I think I saw as well there were some places where they had to be really careful of that and they were doing something like you suggested Rikesh of like drying it they had like a solar chimney and in the end because it became so dry, it was like a briquette and you could actually use it as like a solid fuel and then you could actually burn it once it had been really dried. Yeah, mm -hmm. that was also like another output you could get. I didn't put I was a just picture, but yeah, it's really interesting. Mm -hmm. I was just remembering that uh, workshop we did in, uh, I can't remember the name of the ladies land. Um, <laughs> Yeah, you know what I'm Oh, I should have put a picture of that. The worst, so the worst compost toilet you can imagine. <laughs> the most ridiculously bizarre compost toilet system you could imagine. Uh, and I just remember at the end when we were Disclaimer, trying to. Disclaimer: Neither I nor Rakesh had any work in that. Yeah. <laughs> Do you want to explain it? What was it? It was like on a hill. Yeah, let's see if I can remember. So it was like on a slope, quite a steep slope. And the toilet was at the top and then there was basically this like open channel down of like directly yeah. down a steep, steep slope. It was kind of halfway yeah. down. So there's a big hill above and then yeah, exactly. the kind of house yeah, and yeah. then the toilet and then still a, uh, a slope below. So yeah, so it was halfway down the hill. And it was, and it like was a like long some top. kind of medieval way to like get your enemies away from the castle you've just got this open channel with all the poop that should be like flowing down <laughs> <laughs> and we were like guys like what's going on like if there's a heavy rain as Rakesh said because it wasn't even at the top of the slope you've got like all that ground behind that's going to be like a big watershed collecting water it's going to go through the toilet it's going to like wash everything down you're going to have this huge like erosion gully that you've started forming and like you're just gonna have like a big river of shits like it yeah it was a terrible idea yeah, yeah it was basically it was a long drop so halfway down the hill a long drop so basically just a big hole in the ground but what she okay that just about okay but what she actually did is above it she actually dug a trench leading right into the ship pit so all the water not only does it just kind of just, you know, the, the parts that are immediately above the hill fall into it, it collects everything from the side, channeling it down this funnel, downhill, straight into the ship pit. And as soon as I saw that, it's like, and they literally just did it the day before for us. And I was like, what? And so we try to correct it, we try to block up this, this channel and try to fill it in and divert it and all this. But when the rains came, oh my, it was just nowhere near strong enough because there was such a big water shed above it. It just broke the banks that we tried to remake and straight into the ship pit, all the shit started floating up and out. And, 
And I remember being there with a pickaxe. I think who was it with me and Danny maybe with a pickaxe trying to dig a hole. So yeah, trying to dig a hole to, to allow it to escape eventually. And so then we're left with just one little barrier between uh, the ship and you know this all the ship now pouring out. And I think at that point, I, I just have this bizarre memory. Maybe I'm wrong, but I just remember everyone then coming to watch us break this last little hole and <laughs> watch this ship pouring out. <laughs> Out of the ship pit. It was. Uh, do I remember that rightly? Oh, it, was, yeah. it was almost yeah, like yeah. a little celebration of uh, the completion of this major job. <laughs> anyway, very bizarre. Yeah, and we could we could write a whole that, book. We could write a whole book yeah. of the disasters of that particular place. It's. Um, if you ever want to know how not to ever build a house, how not to landscape your garden, um, yeah, we. That place was it. <laughs> cool. Anyway, I think we're over time. I think we took up even the uh, the next session. So I think it's time for a break. Um, so let's, let me just quickly check the timetable, but I'm fairly sure. Yeah, the break should have been ten minutes ago. So let's take a let's take a ten minute break. And then we'll do a session on, uh, yeah, what we're harvesting, what's our autumn equinox harvesting pattern. So enjoy your break, 10 minutes. And feel free to stay here and chat if you like, but I'm taking a break. 